we've heard the statement that you know the young people are the leaders of tomorrow. In our community, our young people, in our reality, are the prisoners of tomorrow. The law is what is doing the most harm to young people, the law that says they are criminals. Criminals are people who affect the good order of society. It is the law itself that is at most risk of affecting the good order of society because it's held in disregard, it's not respected, and it is harming people. We'll suddenly realise it doesn't make economic sense to criminalise hundreds of thousands of people at vast cost to achieve nothing other than some kind of sense of moral superiority. The amount of money that is wasted in the justice system and the correction system without addressing the underlying causes of the fending, it's, I think it's scandalous. These laws are not based on evidence, they're not based on science, they're based on power and they're based on ignorance as far as I can see. I can see no other basis for them. Your hands now! On the ground! On the ground! Get down! A shocking new number was released today and it deserves our undivided attention. One out of every 100 Americans is now behind bars, locked up in prison or in jail. Penalizing, criminalizing tens of thousands of people for possessing a drug which is less dangerous than a, a few cans of lager. It makes no sense at all, you know, they're just wasting their money. Why are we spending all this money on the police to enforce a law that is widely disregarded and which serves no useful purpose? The people who are in favour of decriminalising cannabis are seen as lunatic left-wing fringe. And in fact, the evidence supports their perspective. The research and the evidence about cannabis and about decriminalising cannabis supports the perspective that society will be better off if you do decriminalise it. A cannabis smoking club is operating right under the nose of police in Auckland. The Dactory has more than a thousand members who openly flout the law. And yes, we break the law. I am every day. We are not criminals. Why should we be hiding? It's time to come out in the open. We don't ban alcohol because some people become alcoholics. We provide support services for them. If people have problems with drugs, support services are not provided by being locked in a prison cell. And federal officials will continue to apply the law, and DEA officials will review cases, as they have, to determine whether to revoke the registration of any physician who recommends or prescribes so-called Schedule I controlled substances. They stand behind that cannabis is not medicine, in the face of all the scientific evidence that cannabis is medicine. I have found what works, and by God, I'm going to use it. Preventing people from receiving life-saving medicine on an ulterior motive that they want to profit from incarcerating people, then that is truly a crime. I'm not hurting anybody, but they're quite prepared to hurt me. A lot of the drug laws were dictated by the United States. The single convention on drugs, which was the first consolidated drug prohibition, which was sort of the start of our modern drug prohibition. And it was driven entirely by America using American diplomatic power. And it's been sustained by America ever since and attempts to liberalise, change these conventions or modify them in any way or ease off on policy has been expressly stymied by Americans, not covertly, not secretly, but quite expressly. We have increased the amount of money for handling the problem of dangerous drugs sevenfold. Since Richard Nixon started the war on drugs, they've spent a trillion dollars and have been going backwards the whole time. We are determined to build the drug-free America and to join with others to combat drugs around the world. Let there be no doubt, this is ultimately a struggle for human freedom.